This is section 5.3, logarithmic functions and graphs. We usually just say logs instead of logarithmic functions. It's a lot easier. Definition, domain, range, and graph. Okay, we're going to get the domain and range from the graph just like we did with the exponential functions. Recall that y equal a to the x was a one-to-one -one function. That meant that it had an inverse that was also a function. We now look at the inverse of y equal a to the x. So remember, we're looking at a function that is going to undo the exponential functions. Now, when we're doing the exponential functions, I said that I like to keep my a bigger than 1. The same thing is true here, though I'm really not quite as strict about it, that I'm willing to live with a's that are different from, uh, or that were between 0 and 1. So the definition. We let a be a non-negative real number other than 1. Then the logarithmic function, base a, and it's noted like that, the LOG with the subscript a, and it's read log base a. It's given by y is equal to log base a of x if and only if a to the y is equal to x. The LOG with the subscript a acts as the uh, f in terms of naming the function. So whenever a function has its own special abbreviation like the logs do, you can omit the parentheses around the uh, argument if there's no ambiguity. On the 84 and 83 calculators, they will typically put an opening parenthesis as soon as you hit uh, the log key. So you have to remember to close the uh, parenthesis. So again, keep in mind that the log base a of x can be written without the parentheses around the x if there's no ambiguity. So this is what we're familiar with, that a to the y is equal to x. Notice that y is an exponent and y is the name of the function. That's going to be one of our properties. So note, a log is just an exponent. When trying to evaluate a log, like log base 2 of 5, you're asking yourself, 2 to what power is 5? You notice it's going to be a very tough question to answer. In general, we're going to need a calculator. Uh, your calculator does not have a log base a key. Okay, So don't uh, try to find one. It's not there. Some terminology. Y equal log base a of x is called a log equation because it has the word log in it. That's how you can tell it's a log equation if you see the word log. A to the y equal x is called an exponential equation. Okay, notice y equal log base a of x, a to the y equals x. They're equivalent. Notice that for both of them, the base is a. See, log base a, and the exponential function is base a. So they are equivalent. Some illustrations of this. Number one, the log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4 because 2 to the 4th is 16. Notice we can verify the exponential equation. We can actually do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 to get 16. The log base 5 of 1 25th is equal to negative 2 because 5 to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 25th. Again, notice I had to get something that I could actually evaluate in terms of the exponentials. The log base 1 3rd of 27 is equal to minus 3, and that's because 1 3rd to the minus 3 power is going to be 3 cubed, which is 27. Number 4, the log base 4 of 64 is 3, and that's because 4 to the 3rd power is equal to 64. Again, notice that the base of the log function matches the base of the exponential function. That's very important. So, some examples. Let's try to write an equivalent exponential equation for each log equation. So, we're going from logs to their equivalent exponentials. So, here are our four examples. I got log base 3 of 81 is 4. Log base 5 of 125 is equal to 3. Log base 10 of 100,000 is 5. And the log base b of k is equal to j. Notice, except for number 4, we can actually verify that the exponential equation that we write down is true. Okay, I always say that when you're going to write the equivalent exponential equation, you're going to make a little circle. So you're starting off with the same base. The base of the log is 3. The base of your exponential is 3. You're going to have 3 to the 4th power is 81. Okay, notice, the bases match. They're both 3. The exponent is the value of the log, and the other number has to be the right side of the equal sign. Okay, remember, a log is an exponent, so whatever the log is equal to has to be the exponent. For number 2, we follow the same pattern. The base will be 5, 3 will be the exponent, and the other number, the 125, has to be the right-hand side of the equal sign. So 5 to the third power is equal to 125. Notice that is, in fact, true. For number 3, the base will be 10, the exponent will be 5, the remaining number has to be what's by itself on the right side of the equal sign. So 10 to the fifth power is 100,000. And again, we can in fact verify that. Okay, for number 4, just follow the same pattern. The base of the exponential will be b. The exponent will be j. The k has to be off by itself on the other side of the equal sign. So b to the j is equal to k. Okay, notice you can't verify that. You just have to make sure you follow the same pattern. That the base of the log matches the base of the exponential. Whatever the log is equal to is the exponent. 
the value that's left over has to be off by itself on the other side of the equal sign. Let's now go the other way. Let's write an equivalent log equation for each exponential equation. So we're going from exponentials to logs. If you notice, we really can't verify that the log equation is true. It's the exponential equation that's going to be true. It actually follows the same pattern that we did for the uh, going from the logs to the exponentials. So here are exponential equations. 2 to the 5th is 32, 6 cubed is 216, 4 to the minus 2 is 1 16th, and m to the n is equal to w. Remember, the base of the log must match the base of the exponential. Whatever is the exponent has to be what the log is equal to, and the other number has to be what you're taking the log of. Remember, you must take the log of something. So again, we still make the same little circle, but you have to remember to say the word log. So log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5. Again, the base of the log matches the base of the exponential. What the exponent is, is what the log must equal. The other number by itself is what you're taking the log of. Okay, for number 2, log base 6 of 216 has to equal 3. The bases match. The exponent is what the log is equal to. The other number is what you're taking the log of. For number 3, Log base 4 of 1 16th is minus 2. The bases match. The exponent is what the log has to equal. The remaining number is what you're taking the log of. For number 4, the log base m of w is equal to n. The bases match. The exponent is what the log equals. The remaining value is what you're taking the log of. Let's look at domain range and graph. Okay, now remember, these are the inverses of the exponential functions. Since all the exponential functions basically look the same if a is bigger than 1, all of the graphs of the log functions will look the same if a is bigger than 1. And again, we will get the domain and range from the graph. So since log functions are supposed to be inverses of the exponential functions, and all exponential functions look alike, all log functions will look alike, provided we have a greater than 1. From the graph and table of values, we will find the domain and range. So we're going to graph y equal log base 2 of x. Doing this graph uh, basically uh, illustrates what you do anytime you have a log equation. We will write the equivalent exponential equation in order to plot some points. Because remember, we can out actually evaluate exponential stuff. So y equal log base 2 of x is equivalent to 2 to the y is equal to x. Okay, my circle goes the other way because my log is on the right hand side. So we're doing log, excuse me, 2 to the y is equal to x. Okay, notice this equation is solved for x. It's got an x equal. That means we'll pick y, the equation will give x, but you still plot xy. So again, we're going to picking the y, let the equation give x. So I'm going from right to left. I pick y to be 0, x will be 2 to the 0, which is 1. They're all going to go through 1, 0. Remember, the exponentials all went through 0, 1. We switched x and y. If y is 1, x will be 2 to the first power, which is 2. So I have 2, 1. If y is negative 1, x will be 2 to the negative 1, which is a half. I plot 1 half, negative 1. So 1 half, negative 1. Hopefully you see it's starting to curve a little bit now. If y is 2, x will be 2 squared, which is 4. So I'll plot 4, 2. 4, 2. And let's try negative 2. x will be 2 to the minus 2, which will be 1 fourth. So 1 fourth negative 2. Notice it's getting closer and closer to the uh, y-axis. Remember when we were doing x, y equal 2 to the x, it got closer and closer to the x-axis. So there is the graph of log base 2 of y. If you remember what y equal 2 to the x looked like, if I had my imaginary y equal x dotted line here, and I folded them, they would coincide. So if a is greater than 1, then the graph of y equal log base a of x looks like this. The one and only point you know for sure is the x-intercept, 1, 0. Some properties of y equal log base a of x with a bigger than 1. And it's from these properties that we're going to actually get the domain and the range. Number one, it passes through 1, 0. That was our first observation. They all pass through 1, 0. Remember, all the exponentials pass through 0, 1, so we switch the x and the y. Number two, the domain is 0 to infinity. You cannot take the log of 0 or the log of a negative. Because again, if we go back to the graph, 
all of the x values are to the right of the y-axis. Number three, the range is all real numbers. A log will spit out anything, but you cannot take the log of zero or the log of a negative. So notice, logs have problems with their domain. Number four, the graph is in one piece. Number two, it's always increasing. As we read from left to right, it was always going uphill. It passes horizontal line test. It had an inverse that was a function. Remember the inverse of the log functions or the exponential function. And number seven, it gets close and close to the y-axis, technically the negative y-axis, without ever crossing the y-axis. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote of y equal log base a of x. So if we do translations in, uh, left and right, then the asymptote will also move left and right with it. Now, remember, logs have problems with their domain. Let's try some examples of finding domains. So find the domain of each function. Okay, here's our first one f of x equals 5 times log base 7 of 3x minus 11. Remember, no logs of 0, no logs of negatives. So what we're taking the log of 3x minus 11 can't be 0, it can't be negative. So we need 3x minus 11 greater than 0. We're actually going to be finding the domain. So we're solving a nice little inequality. So all of our rules about solving inequality still apply. Remember, if you divide by a negative, reverse the direction of the inequality. So let's see, add 11 to both sides. 3x greater than 11. Divide by 3 x greater than 11 thirds. So that is the domain, or as an interval, 11 thirds to infinity. Now when you're doing the problems on homework, tests, quizzes, read the directions carefully to see are you supposed to write an interval, or can you get away with leaving the inequality. Number two, I have f of x equals five times e to the three x minus 12. So remember, uh, an exponential function, which is what we have, has no problems with its domain. So its domain is all real numbers which as an interval is minus infinity to infinity. Number three, f of x is log base three of two x minus 18 plus four x minus 11. Okay, the four x minus 11 is not part of the log, so the two x minus 18 is what I need to have greater than zero. So we're gonna solve two x minus 18 greater than zero. Add 18 to both sides, so I have two x greater than 18. Divide by 2, I have x is greater than 9. As an interval, the open interval from 9 to infinity. Remember, no logs of 0, no logs of negatives. Okay, now your calculator can only evaluate two types of logs. So, we're looking at common logs and natural logs. These are the two types of logs that your calculator can in fact evaluate. We now look at two special log functions. These log functions are on your calculator. You should see a key on your calculator that says LOG common logs. Okay, definition. The common log function denoted LOG, notice no subscript, is the log function base 10. So if you just see LOG without a subscript, it's log base 10. The 10 is understood to be there. We never write the subscript 10 for the lo common log function. You just write LOG. It's not simplified if you write the 10 with it. So that means that log base 10 of x is really just log of x. So with logs, if you don't see the base, it is understood to be 10. This is the log key on your calculator. So your calculator can evaluate log base 10, which are the common logs. So let's try some examples. Evaluate each of the following. Round your final answer to six places to the right of the decimal point. Now, if we're gonna do this on the calculator, we can set our float to be six to save us some trouble. So let me take out the um, 83 here. So I'm gonna set my mode float on over to six, press enter, and quit. So now let's get back to the problems. There are my four problems. You're just gonna press the LOG key. So for the first one, I do log. Okay, notice it did open a parenthesis, and then five, six, nine, nine close parenthesis, and I get 3.755799. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay, if you do the same thing for number two, you're going to press log, 12.98, close your parenthesis. You have 1.113257. For number three, you have 12 times, so you can just do the 12 first. 
uh, let's see, 12. You don't need to say times, you can if you wish, but don't need to. Log 34604.2, close parenthesis. So we get 54.469546. And for the last one, the log of 25, you're going to get 1.397940, and you do need the zero. Remember what this means. If you take 10 to this power, you will get, okay, roughly 25. Uh, log functions usually give out irrational numbers, so most of these end up being approximations anyway, but remember, that's what it means. 10 to this power is going to give you, okay, roughly 25. Natural logs. Definition. The natural log function denoted by an LN, and there should be an LN key on your calculator. And by the way, that's an L, not an I, and it's read natural log. Here's the log function, base E. Okay, E is considered the base of the natural exponential function. So the base of the natural log function is going to be the base E. So let's try some examples of these. So natural log functions are called Napierian logs in honor of John Napier, who actually developed the concept of logs. Napier's base was actually e to the negative 1. Now remember, we found e by trying to compound interest more and more times per year. So log base e of x is ln x. So that's the ln key on your calculator. So it is below, it's the key below the log key on your calculator. So your calculator can do common logs and natural logs. So evaluate the following. Round your final answer to 6 places to right at the decimal point. We already have our float set on 6, so we need to change that. So here are our three examples. Notice number 3 is kind of an interesting problem to look at. Okay, for number 1, okay, let me clear this out. Instead of pressing LOG, press LN. Uh, 56.8. Close parenthesis. And you're going to get 4.039536. Remember, that means if you take E to that power, you will get roughly 56.8. For number two, 35 natural log of 0.98. Okay, again, if you do the 35 first, so let's take out the calculator. 35 ln 0.98, close parenthesis. We get negative 0 0.707095. Okay, and the last one, notice the numerator and denominator have their own set of operations. On the 83 and the earlier models of the 84, you will need to put parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator. So let me take up a calculator and see what's going on here. Let me clear all this out. Open the parentheses for the numerator. 3. Natural log. 5. Okay, close the parentheses that the calculator opened. Minus 2. Natural log. 7. Close the parentheses that the calculator opened for natural log. Close the parenthesis for the numerator. Divided by. Open the parenthesis for the denominator. 4. Natural log. 7. Close the parenthesis that the calculator opened. Plus. 10. Natural log. 5. Close parenthesis for the natural log. Close parenthesis for the denominator. And you get 0 0.039220. Okay, remember, if the numerator or the denominator has an operation, plus and minus, you're going to need parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator. You'll also need to do that when you type your answers in D2L. Okay, again, remember, your calculator can only do common logs, natural logs. How would we do something like log, log base 2 of 5? The change of base formula. Okay, we need a way to calculate other base logs. It is accomplished with the following formula called the change of base formula. At this stage, it's more important that you know how to use it rather than trying to figure out why it works or where it came from. It actually came from properties of exponentials. Remember, logs are exponents. So the change of base formula, it says log base A of X. Is the natural log of X or the natural log of A? Or if you prefer to use the LOG key, the log base A of X is the log of X over the log of A. You may use either one. The intermediate calculations may look different, but the final answer will be the same no matter which one you use. OK, 
Okay, and remember, all you care about is writing down the final answer. Let your calculator do all the work. There's no need for you to write down any intermediate steps. So evaluate each of the following. Round your final answer to six places to the right of the decimal point. So we can keep our float set to six. So here are our four problems. Okay, for the first one, log base two of five. Okay, if I clear this out. Okay, log base two of five. The immediate step, it's natural log of five over natural log of two. So I'm gonna do natural log of five, close, divided by natural log of two, close. So I get 2.321928. Remember, what that means if you take two to this power, you're gonna get roughly five. Now notice, if I do LOGs instead of LNs, log of five, divided by log of two, I get the same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you use. So if there is anything in the middle you want to write down, it's the formula, there, the change of base formula, natural log of five over natural log of two, and you crunch that out to get the 2.321928. Number two, that's gonna be natural log of 908 divided by natural log of seven. Now again, if you replace the LNs with LOGs, you'll get the same thing. When you give it to your calculator, you should get 3.500287. So again, your steps would be natural log of 908, close parenthesis, the calculator open for natural log, divided by natural log of seven. Again, close parenthesis, the calculator open. Now again, on the newer models of the TI-84, they may not open the parenthesis, so you may not need to have room to close it. So for number three, let me look at the 84. Let me see if this one actually opens parentheses. So let's see, what are we doing here? I'm gonna do natural log of two seven, so two divided by seven. Okay, it did open the parentheses, right? Divided by, well, I got it upside down, don't I? I should be doing natural log of 23 first. Almost made a freshman mistake, didn't I? Divided by natural log of two sevenths. So the 84 is also opening the parentheses when I do natural logs. And I get this thing, which if I go to the four pl uh, six places again I don't want to have to think too hard so I just go ahead and set my float here to six press enter quit this and then just press enter again it'll round for me so negative two point five zero two eight six three there really is no reason for you to make mistakes rounding your calculator can do all the work you may as well let it do all the work so there's our formula and there's the result of the calculation for number four you'll be looking at natural log of ninety eight point six over natural log of four point two you let your calculator crunch it out, you get 3.199164. So you have to use the change of base formula to calculate any other base besides common logs and natural logs. That is the end of section 5.3.